show you some exam questions on upper and lower bounds. In this question, it says that the sides of a regular hexagon are 80 millimetres correct to the nearest millimetre. Calculate the lower bound of the perimeter of the hexagon. So a hexagon is a six-sided shape and a regular hexagon just means that all of the lengths are equal in size. Okay, um, perimeter, that is the distance around the outside of the shape, so all of the sides added together. Now, in this question, they're asking for the lower bound of the perimeter. So a good starting point would be to work out the lower bound of one of the lengths. So it says the lengths are 80 millimeters, correct, to the nearest millimeter. If you see my first video on upper and lower bounds, hopefully you'll know that nice little trick I showed you to quickly work out upper and lower bounds. In this question, we're rounding to the nearest one millimeter. So we take the number one and we divide it by two, giving us 0 0.5. Now to work out the lower bound, you have to subtract this number from 80. So 80 minus 0 0.5 is equal to 79.5. If we had been working out the upper bound instead, you would have added instead of subtracted. Now that's the lower bound for one of the, the sides, one of the lengths in this hexagon. But to work out the perimeter, we have to take the length of one side and multiply by six, because remember in a hexagon there are six sides altogether, which gives us a total of 477 millimetres, which is the lower bound of the perimeter of the hexagon. we've been given a formula P is equal to 2 multiplied by W plus H. They also tell us that W is equal to 12 and H is equal to 4 and they've both been rounded correct to the nearest whole number. We need to work out the upper bound for the value of P. So here's the value P and here's how we calculate P. If we're working out the upper bound of this letter P, it means we're working out the largest possible value that P can be. So in order to work out the largest possible value of P, we need the largest possible value of W and also H. So I need to work out the upper bound of both W and H. Once I've got those, I can substitute them into the formula and calculate the value of P. So let's start with W. So W is equal to 12. If I take the upper bound of W, it should be 12.5. And then if I take H, so H is equal to 4, the upper bound should be 4.5. Okay, so they're my upper bounds for W and H. Then I just need to take them and plug them into the formula. Okay, so instead of W, I'm replacing it with 12.5. And instead of H, I'm replacing it with 4.5. So if I work this out, so add these together and then multiply the answer by 2, I get 34, which is the upper bound for the value of P. In this question, it says a car travels at a constant speed. It travels a distance of 146.2 metres correct to one decimal place, and this takes 7 seconds correct to the nearest second. Calculate the upper bound for the speed of the car. So just here I've written down the formula to calculate speed. You have to divide the distance by the time, okay, to calculate speed. So if we're working out the upper bound for the speed, we want to work out the largest possible value or the greatest speed that the car can have, okay? If we're working out the largest possible value for the speed, we need to take the largest possible value for the distance, i.e. the upper bound, but the smallest possible time, i.e. the lower bound for time. Now, I'll just give you a quick example with numbers to show you why this is the case. If I take the number 20, for example, and I divide it by 10, I get 2. 
If I take the number 20 and I divide it by 4, I get 5. Can you see that when you divide by a larger number, you have a smaller result? When you divide that same number by a smaller number, because 4 is smaller than 10, you get a larger answer. So in order to get the upper bound for the speed, so the greatest possible speed, you need to take the upper bound for the distance, so make the distance as large as possible, but you need to divide by the smallest possible number, i.e. the lower bound for time. Okay, so let's look at the question again. It says the distance is 146.2 metres, correct to one decimal place. So if I take the upper bound for distance, that would be 146.25. Then if I take the time, so that was 7 seconds, but this time I need to take the lower bound, so that would be 6.5. Okay, so now I have the upper bound for the distance, the lower bound for the time, now I need to calculate speed, okay? So to work out speed, distance divided by time, remember this is the distance, so 146.25, and the time is 6.5 seconds, which gives you 22.5, um, it's speed, isn't it, and it's meters per second. So that is the upper bound for the speed of the car. It says the distance between two towns is 600 kilometers, correct to the nearest 10 kilometers. A car takes 8 hours 40 minutes, correct to the nearest 10 minutes, to travel this distance. Calculate the lower bound for the average speed of the car in kilometers per hour. So, again, I've written down the formula to calculate speed. Okay, it's distance divided by time. In this question, we're working out the lower bound for the speed instead. So the lower bound for the speed is the slowest possible speed, the smallest possible speed of the car, okay, when it's travelling. So if we're working at the smallest possible speed, we need to take the smallest distance that was possible, i.e. the lower bound. And this time we need to take the upper bound for the time, okay, we're dividing by the largest possible time. And I'll just show you again with those numbers that I showed you with earlier. So if I take the number 20 and I divide by five, I get two. If I divide the same number 20 by uh, two, I get 10. Can you see that when I divide by a bigger number, because five is bigger than two, okay, for the denominator, I get a smaller answer. And remember, we're working out the lower bound for the speed, the smallest possible speed. So to get the smallest result, we need to divide by the largest possible number, i.e. the upper bound for time, okay? So it's the other way around to the previous question that we looked at. So I need to take the lower bound for the distance. So the distance is here, 600 kilometers, and it was rounded correct to the nearest 10 kilometers. So the lower bound for distance, is 595 kilometers and then for time we're taking the upper bound remember and the time was 8 hours 40 minutes correct to the nearest 10 minutes so if I take the upper bound that would be 8 hours and 45 minutes okay so I've got my lower bound and my upper bound for distance and time now all we need to do is calculate the speed, so we're going to substitute distance and time into the formula. Okay, so the distance we just said was 595, and the time over here is 8 hours and 45 minutes. Remember, the answer has to be in kilometres per hour. This is already in hours, 8 hours. But 45 minutes is not in hours. You could either write it as 8.75 because 45 minutes is three quarters of an hour 
and uh, three quarters written as a decimal is 0 0.75 and that would give you the answer. However, here's a different method that I quite like that will work for every type of time, not just one um, that you know how to write as a decimal easily. You could also write it like this, 45 over 60, because to change minutes into hours, you always have to divide by 60. So remember that eight was already in hours, eight hours, but the 45 was in minutes and has to be converted into hours, and in order to do that, you divide by 60, always, okay, when changing minutes to hours. So if you put that into the calculator, you should get, and I'm going to cheat, I think it is 68, yes, at least that's what I worked out earlier. So 68 kilometers per hour is the lower bound for the average speed of the car. It says that Niha has a piece of ribbon of length 23 centimeters, correct to the nearest centimeter, and from this ribbon she cuts off a piece with length 87 millimeters, correct to the nearest millimeter. Work out the lower bound and the upper bound for the length of the remaining ribbon. Give your answer in centimeters. So here I've just done a little diagram here that shows the piece of ribbon here, okay, measuring 23 centimeters. And this line here is just to show where she's going to cut the ribbon. And this part that she cuts off here is 87 millimeters. And this is the remaining ribbon. And we're trying to work out the lower and upper bound of this remaining part of the ribbon, okay? So because we're working out both lower and upper bounds in this question, it's a good idea to start by working out the upper and lower bounds for the full length of ribbon here and also the piece that she's cutting off here, 87 millimeters. Okay, so let's start with the full length of the ribbon. So it's 23 centimeters measured to the nearest centimeter. So the lower bound would be 22.5 centimeters and the upper bound would be 23.5 centimeters. Next, if we look at the piece that she's cutting off, so it's 87 millimeters rounded to the nearest millimeter so the lower bound would be 86.5 millimetres and the upper bound 87.5 millimetres. But remember, the final answer has to be in centimetres. So we can't leave these values like that, okay, in millimetres. We have to convert them into centimetres. Now, one centimetre is equivalent to 10 millimetres. So to change millimetres into centimetres, you must divide by 10, always, okay? So I'm going to do just that with these values here. I'm going to divide them both by 10. So if I divide 86.5 by 10, I get 8.65 centimetres. Remember, it's now in centimetres. And if I divide 87.5 by 10, I get 8.75 centimetres. And I'm just going to cross out those previous values there so I don't use the wrong ones in the next calculation, okay? So I've worked out the upper and lower bounds for the full length of ribbon, but also the piece that she cuts off here. So we're working out the lower bound and the upper bound for the length that's remaining, this part here. Let's start with the lower bound. So that means I'm trying to work out the smallest length that could be left over after she's cut a piece of the ribbon off. So if I want it to be as small as possible, I want to start off with the smallest amount of ribbon. Okay, so I want to take the lower bound for the full length, which is here, 22.5 centimetres. So because she's cutting off a piece of ribbon, we have to subtract this part here, okay? But if we want the remaining ribbon to be small, or as small as possible, we need to cut off as much as we can here, okay? So a larger amount here, which means I'm taking the upper bound for the piece that I'm cutting off, okay? So the upper bound was over here, 8.75. Okay, so if I subtract 
that value from 22.5, I get 13.75 centimeters. So that is the lower bound for the remaining piece of ribbon. Next, let's look at the upper bound. So that just means the remaining piece of ribbon here has to be as large as possible, as long as possible. So in order for that to happen, I need to take the longest piece of ribbon to start with, so the upper bound for the entire length, which is here, 23.5. And if I want the remaining ribbon, remember, to be as big as possible, I want to cut off as little as possible at this end. So I want to take the lower bound for the piece that she's cutting off, which is over here, 8.65. And if I subtract that, I get 14.8. Five centimeters. There we go.